Hey everyone, Russ Barkley here. Hey, I wanted to get to jump on this because there's an article coming out in today's news at various trade media websites about the risk of psychosis in people who are taking ADHD medications, especially amphetamines. I've gotten a number of emails about that today, and I've also looked at the websites to see how they're reporting. As always, the media appears to be sensationalizing this story. You can see here over at NBCNews.com, high doses of ADHD drugs are linked to a greater risk of amphetamine, or excuse me, risk of psychosis. Oh my God, I'm so scared. And we see it over here at Barron's.com. And again, the article, same study, is discussed over at the DailyMail.com. So it's appearing over in the UK and Europe more generally, as you can see here. Common prescription drug taken by tens of millions massively raises the risk of a mental breakdown. Oh my God, the overstatement in this particular article is beyond belief, but I would expect no less from that news source. Course, and then it also was discussed over at neurosciencenews.com. As you see here, high doses of ADHD meds linked to increased risk of psychosis. So what is going on here? Let's take a quick look, right? Here's the article. It appeared this week in the American Journal of Psychiatry, published by Lauren Moran and others at McLean Hospital near Boston and also many associated with Mass General Hospital as well. And let's talk about the study. The study looks at people who came into McLean at, for an inpatient admission. They look at those who were admitted for psychosis and mania, and then they compared them to those who had been admitted for anxiety and depression. So we're starting here with people already admitted to an inpatient psychiatric facility. These were people between 16 and 35 years of age, and the admissions were between 2005 and 2019, about, oh, what's that, 14, 15 years of admission. So these are fairly large samples. We're talking about over 1,300 cases admitted for psychosis and mania versus double that, over 2,700 who were the control subjects admitted to the other unit for depression, anxiety. And the study found that if you were admitted to the unit for psychosis and mania, you were two and a half times, about 2.7 times more likely to be taking a stimulant medication versus if you were admitted to the other unit for depression, anxiety. So uh, a substantial, if you will, increase in risk associated with taking amphetamines. If they were taking more than 30 milligrams a day, the risk was nearly 5.3 times greater that they would be admitted to the unit for psychosis than admitted to the unit for anxiety depression. Very interesting paper scientifically. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it methodologically other than it gets the logic backward. What we want to know is, let's look at the percentage of the population that has adult ADHD. Let's then look at the percentage that is taking an amphetamine. And then let's look at what percentage of them are likely to develop a psychotic reaction. That's the way we ordinarily would think about things in life. Think about them logically. It's what you want to know. It's why these articles are so concerning to my subscribers, because they're looking at it that way. And that's not the way the study was done. The study looked at people already admitted to the hospital for psychosis and mania versus other disorders. And then it looked back to see whether or not these people had taken a stimulant medication, amphetamine in particular, and at what dose they took it. And then what were the odds they were admitted to one unit over the other? And the odds were certainly greater that they were admitted for psychosis or mania. But the rate was quite low. So uh, what we want to look at, as I've said, is going forward logically from ADHD to medication treatment to risk of psychosis. Now, luckily, the authors pointed out, Dr. Moran specifically, when she was interviewed about this, that she did say that the risk of a psychotic reaction to amphetamine was 1% or less. 
And that's what you want to know. So as opposed to these odds ratios of 2.7 and 5.3 associated with amphetamine, and by the way, it was primarily associated with amphetamine, not methylphenidate. That's been found in other studies. So it all sounds very worrying. We want to clutch our pearls and wring our hands and just get really upset about this. And that's what the media, I guess, is looking for, is to grab your attention, get eyes on their website with a sensational headline. But when we think it through, it's no big deal. It's a nothing burger. So let's look at this from the perspective of a patient, okay? What is the risk of psychosis in people with ADHD? Let's start with that. Well, here's a nice meta-analysis that was published back about three years ago of all the research on that issue. And what does it find? The risk of people with ADHD developing a psychosis was about, let's have a look at it here, uh, about 4% or four times greater, excuse me, than the general population. That's an odds ratio. What was the actual percentage? The actual percentage was very low. If we look down into the methods and the results of the study, we find that the risk of psychosis in ADHD was 2.7%. Is that higher than in the general population? Yes. Is it something for everybody to worry about with ADHD? No. There's just a slight increase in risk. We know that the disorders are slightly related genetically, not much. And by the way, the risk in the population was about 1%. So again, 1% versus 2.7%, you're looking at about, what's that? An increase of 1.7% for psychosis in people with ADHD. Now, if you have ADHD and you take an amphetamine, what is the risk that you're going to have a psychotic reaction due to the amphetamine? Well, there are several meta-analyses that have been done. Samuel Cortese has done some. Here is a paper reporting an original article that they did looking at over 337,000 adolescents and young adults in a particular database. And they're looking at the risk of psychosis when taking an amphetamine or methylphenidate. And there it is, folks. Two-tenths of 1% in the amphetamine group, one-tenth of 1% in the methylphenidate group. So slightly greater increase in risk of a psychotic reaction if you take an amphetamine over methylphenidate, but the risks are very, very low overall. And Cortese also points out, you will see down here, that of those who developed a psychotic reaction, 92% of them recovered that is, the psychosis resolved with discontinuation of the medication. So good news there. If you have a psychotic reaction and you're one of those rare individuals, the odds are that you will recover from the side effect of the medication. So there you have it, folks. Not an awful lot for us to be concerned about. It's an interesting study, but as I said, it gets the logic backward from what we are interested in knowing as consumers, as people who may have ADHD and who are taking medication, what's the risk? The risk is low. Not much higher than the risk of psychosis in general in people with ADHD. A slightly greater increase if you're taking amphetamine. But the odds are, should you have such a rare reaction, the vast majority of people, 92% or more, recover after stopping the medication. So I hope that reassures you that despite the media's penchant for sensationalizing this particular study and not getting the logic correct in terms of understanding the results of the study and the way it was done, there's no reason for us to be concerned about this right now. Pay attention if you're a clinician and you're prescribing medication. It is going to happen periodically that patients are going to develop a psychosis when taking an amphetamine. We've known that for decades, but the risk remains 
very, very low. Okay, everybody, I hope that reassures you that despite the media's sensationalizing of this study, it's not anything for us to really be concerned about. Thanks for joining me today for this breaking news. I really appreciate it. Think about subscribing if you're not a subscriber. Please recommend the channel to others who might need this information. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. Live well and be well. Bye for now.